our next speaker is uh, Christoph who tell us about uh, the Thaddeus 2 web server. Yeah, Thaddeus 2nd version, a web server that facilitates the clinical diagnosis by pathogenicity assessment of structural variation disregarding this arranging 3D chromatin structure. How cumbersome is that, right? Uh, so, <coughs> uh, I'm presenting the work uh, similarly of Barbara, who cannot be here, uh, but this is like uh, her child, really. So, uh, we will get to the tool, but first of all, the motivation so that we are on the same page. So, uh, we all know, most, more or less, that there are structural variants on genome during crossing over, and there are some copy number variations during the development of, of the newborn, for example. And uh, there can be some problems with that because uh, it can happen in coding region and we lost gene function, but it can happen also in non-coding region, which is even more uh, problematic because we cannot detect it with uh, easy tools like whole exome sequencing, but we need to have like more in-depth data. Uh, and since it is there, we want to track that because uh, it can happen, uh, well, it's also important that it happens through different mechanisms so we have deletions, we have uh, inversions, translocations, uh, duplications. So there are lots of problems. And wha what we want to do, first of all, is we want to uh, jump into that and somehow see what happened in the genome, right? Uh, so we want to know about the conformation of the chromatin uh, that uh, resulted from these structural variants and, and copy number variations because uh, in the very uh, sub, let's say, uh, sub mega base level, we can see these Todd structures. So uh, we know that on the very low level, uh, there are the, these um, long range, uh, range regulatory interactions, so gene promoter. And if something happens in non-coding gene, uh, non-coding non-coding region, what can happen is just we break this contact, right? And we want to trace that because. It turns out that there are lots of, um, lots of problems that if TAD is broken, then it leads to some development of disease. Uh, and what we want to do uh, is we want to solve this with a tool that will be mostly for clinicians, but also for all of you who have data and want to analyze your data, understand visually what happens uh, within this disrupt genome, and then to assess what genes can be affected by that and what is the probability that this function of gene was lost and this generates some, uh, some problems, some diseases. Uh, so uh, there is a state of the art, obviously, uh, where you can assess what happens when uh, given high C data, when you have contacts on the genome, you can tell that, okay, with the duplication, something happens, and you have the synthetic, so the continuous view of genome, like in UCSC and, and things. You, you can tell with these, uh, these services, you can tell what happens. You, you use high C maps, as I said. You can annotate TADs. You can use virtual 4C to understand the interactions, long, uh, long interactions between promoters and, and gene. That's cool, but what is missing in, at some level is the breakpoint browser mode. So if we have a translocation, we don't lose the copy. We, we just shift it into another place, or we have a fusion of chromosomes. And what we want to do is to understand how broken is that? So how many interactions we lost, and so on and so on. So what we propose is to uh, do a useful thing in the sense that we put together lots of ontologies, lots, lots of uh, scores for pathogenicity uh, in one place so that clinician can, can just get his data, location of the problems of SVs, CNVs, and then quantify how problematic is the situation of this specific patient, for example. Uh, and the clinical workflow for such clinician would be to, first of all, start with input data. And what we need to have at the very beginning of, of the tool is to identify where is, for example, the breakpoint which happened on the sequence, for example, in non-coding uh, region. Uh, and it can be translocation, inversion, deletion, duplication, whatsoever, using whatsoever data. But if he gets these breakpoint coordinates, then he can jump into our tool. Uh, using high C matrices that we already have uh, uploaded to our tool, for different uh, cell types and different tissue types and 
like we can communicate with different uh, different modalities here. Uh, then he chooses uh, some mode, so the breakpoint mode for translocation, or the syntactic mode, which is more traditional for duplications and loss of genes or loss of uh, sequences. Uh, and then we jump into the fun part, which is we help to select genes, uh, the disease-causing putative genes, based on lots of data that we catch from other databases and so on. So we measure distance from breakpoints, which is like easy. Uh, we can uh, tell how, how many uh, broken enhancer promoter interactions are there. We use some like uh, golden standard scores like NOMAD, PLI score, and so on and so on. Uh, and given that, we have a ranking of, of genes. But then, as you know, if uh, someone uh, makes a statement that I found something, usually the Society of Scientists says, what well, is your p-value, right? And then uh, it, we also provide that because it's usually hard to tell if something is by chance or not. So also um, the tool does a sampling-based p-values for uh, reliability of a gene that is causing, in fact, this uh, disease. And based on that, uh, we can understand the position effects based on, again, different, uh, different sources of knowledge. And after that, uh, the one who is in wet lab can construct specific experiments to understand if this is exactly the gene that happens to uh, provoke such uh, disorders. Uh, and since this was supposed to be five minutes talk, I need to really run through it. So this is one of the case studies that we did and published. Um, so there was a patient who was diagnosed with epileptic seizures and severe developmental delay. And this is what it looks like uh, in, in our tool. In this breakpoint mode, you can see the fusion of these two chromosomes. So there is chromosome 14 from here and six from here. And obviously you can read everything because it's so readable. But uh, there are some important genes here. Uh, so on the left-hand side, we have Fox G1, and on the right-hand side, then there is DSP. And thanks to the fact that we also uh, take into account the wild-type genomes, so the full view of chromosome 14 in that region, the full view of chromosome 6, we can easily assess which connections based on this, because here we have these tads, these triangles, you, you, should, ha you should see them, but it's kind of blurry here. But there are some contacts here, and we can tell that th there is a communication between genes and enhancers here, and we can then tell that th these connections were broken, and what's more important that some artificial connections might have been created here as the result of translocation. And there might have been some communication of enhancer, but some different enhancer with that specific gene. Uh, and so after the, sorry, after the studies of, of clinicians, they found out that exactly the, the fact that Tadeusz pointed out the Fox G1 genome, they actually made an assessment that this is uh, important fact about etiology of this, uh, this fact about developmental delay and so on. Uh, yeah, and here you can see only a glimpse of what actually you can do with the tool because you can add lots of tracks here. Uh, you can upload your own. You can, again, take something that is already publicly available and just plug it into uh, the tool. And uh, the tool itself is publicly available. You can jump into that. You can like, play around with it, uh, see if, if, if it's interesting or not. Uh, hopefully it is. Uh, and uh, yeah, also it is published in, in uh, NAR. Uh, so you can read it, go through it. Uh, the code is available. Uh, there are lots of instructions. There is also a small video to understand how to use the tool. Uh, and yeah. Feel free to contact Barbara. She is like the super programmer who can do anything you want to extend the tool. Uh, and she has like already tons of ideas how to make it even better. And this is also the whole team, uh, three people who work actually with uh, in wet lab with the data uh, who were super excited and gave inspiration to create a tool. So that was the fastest I can do. <laughs> Uh, and if you have questions, uh, I'm sure you'll get a yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thank you.